welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, I'm playing Legacy at the request of Patreon subscriber CC Ant Man. And I have one of the weirdest breweries that I would accept for the channel. Once in a while, someone will get into my messages and be like, I want you to play Wheel of Sun and Moon and Helm of Obedience and force as many draws as possible, or Divine Intervention plus Vampire Hex Mage, or you know, just stuff that is funny that it exists in Magic, but I can't make a 90 minute video out of it. And this deck ran right up to that line and then stopped and it's just viable enough that i'm willing to play it because it actually does have something of a plan to win the game the card shared fate four and a blue enchantment if a player would draw a card that player exiles the top card of their opponent's library face down instead each player may look at cards they exile with shared fate and play lands and cast spells from among those cards basically your deck is mine my deck is yours let's play magic from here the twist is that my deck actually can't win the game. The only things in this deck are card draw, removal, counter spells, and creatures that you don't get to keep if you play them. Uro is the best example of this. If you play Uro out of Shared Fate, it triggers for you and then goes to my graveyard where I can bring it back and I'm the one who actually gets the 6-6. Six, six. Brahad's Bombshell, this is my deck. I actually did a little bit of play with this deck before recording the league, which is not something I normally do. And honestly, I just messed up the interactions in this deck so badly that I had to scrap the league after two rounds and start again. But those two rounds gave me thoughts about the deck. And I wanted another threat. Bronze Bombshell. I was cackling like a schoolboy when I remembered this card exists. Four mana, four one. When a player other than Bronze Bombshell's owner controls it, that player sacrifices it and they take seven. This is a deck. This is a card I built a lot of decks around when I was a, a casual in high school and dissension was new. This is just the kind of thing where it's like, how do I get my opponent to have this? Well, shared fate. I mean, they just don't cast it if they get it, but I can still cast it in bash for four. I'll count that as a W for the deck. The original build was heavier on Grim Monolith. It had four. I went down to two. I just wanted more spells. I added two Ottawaras to the deck because... To Fairy Time Raveler, you actually just cannot beat if it resolves. That can just sit and play with loyalty on it, eventually bounce the Shared Fate, and then they're playing Magic again. I want a way to clear Planeswalkers. And the Ottawara and Beseju land cycle is perfect for this deck, because if it's in your hand, you can channel it. But if it's in Exile, where you can play it, it's only a land. It's a spell for me, but it's not for them, and that's perfect. You can't play anything in the deck that could win the game, and you can't play anything in the deck that could remove Shared Fate. And that is what we've done here. Once you stick a Shared Fate on an even board, you will both draw each other's decks, your opponent will not be able to present any threats for the rest of the game, and you just have to hope that they have more threats in their deck than you have removal and counter spells in yours, which is a lot, actually. There's... 10 hard answers to stuff between the Terminus, the Plow, and the Forces. And you just gotta have, hope that your opponent's deck controls 11 1 1 creatures or better. It doesn't take much, like any, literally anything that sticks will win the game, but you do have to get through your own deck that is built to be a control deck. The games get very weird. Players can't deck because Shared Fate replaces the draw with exiling a top card. So you're never actually drawing from an empty library unless the Shared Fate gets removed somehow. Which is good news because this deck is full of card advantage and they will have your deck in their exile zone way before you have theirs. But then it's up to them to figure out what they're going to do with it because it's not going to win them the game. This gets very weird. The clock is going to be a big part of it. If an opponent realizes what's going on and just starts F6ing aggressively, that's the worst thing that can happen. If they're actually trying to play magic, that's good news for me. And that's what's going on here. It's weird, but it does have an actual plan to win the game, which is basically the only bar I ask for when people send me decks. 
Let's get into it. This is Shared Fate Prison. I'm on the draw in round one with Forest Blue Card Sylvan Library. That's a plan all on its own. With Ancient Tomb, I can even play around days if I suspect my opponent might be up to something like that. Keeping it. The art on Ancient Tomb rules so hard. Once in a while, I actually look at this card and remember that there's like little Casper the Friendly Ghost sperm skulls just floating out of this tomb. I love these guys. Opponents on six so far. Six is the final keep. Blue to Delta. All right. I'm just going to run Tropical Island out there. I don't actually care if they wasteland me because they didn't do anything on turn one. If they spend turn two wastelanding me instead, that's just a draw step I get. Underground Sea. Ponder. Wall to six, blue to Delta for Underground Sea. Getting combo vibes, though the best tempo deck in the format also having this start. Kinda messing with my calculation a little bit. Uh, I just drew a Terminus, which does not help now. Now I have to make the real decision. Do I play around days with this Ancient Tomb? Because losing two life meaningfully affects how deep I'm willing to go on Sylvan Library. But yeah, I'm going to play around days if I can. Okay, that's in there. We'll never know if they have a daze that's blank in their hand or if they just don't have interaction or they're not spending it here. Cycling Troll. Okay, this is a daze deck. I'm glad I did what I did. Found and then immediately played an Underground Sea. I'm going to negate this reanimate because Force of Negation, not super good in this matchup. They are forcing me back. Pitching Brainstorm. Okay. You can have a troll. Now I just need to find one of my white removal spells, please. I do play a lot of them. Tundra. Uro Lorien revealed. Interesting. Putting back Tundra for sure. I wish I could put back the Terminus. Why didn't I draw you this turn? You dumbass. So I have to take two to play Uro. Tundra's going back for sure. And... I don't think I can afford to pay four for Lorien Revealed, even though I do want it. So that puts me to 14. Tapping Ancient Tomb puts me to 12. Uro brings me up to 15. Troll puts me to 9. I think I'm okay with this. I'll pay four life to keep the Lorien. I'm going to fetch for a Tundra. Oh, wait, I'm off by a land. I, I didn't count the fetch. Luckily, that doesn't really affect my, my plan here, but it could. Another Sylvan Library. <laughs> Drop in another Ancient Tomb. And I could cycle with the Lorien revealed with my floating mana, or I could keep Force Blue card available. I think Force Blue card is more important. Turns out having Ancient Tomb in the mana base of your control deck when you're under the gun from a troll is a tough beat. I guess if I had cycled Lorien revealed last turn, I could just hard cast Terminus on mine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I actually can still just do that. I'm playing into days. I didn't have to play into Daze, but I get to keep Force of Will up for this turn. In exchange, I have to play into Daze next turn. But they pitched Brainstorm to their Force on, on my Force, which makes me think that they didn't have Daze at the time. Because seeing multiple Ancient Tombs, do you keep Daze in your hand over Brainstorm? I don't think so. Ugh. Well, I guess this is why we kept Force of Will in the hand. This is where I just flipped the other Terminus and wish I had done anything else. It's Ponder, Lorien Revealed, Blooded Strand. I could just put Terminus on the stack. With two cards left in their hand over there, I go to two to do this. Oh my god. This is rough. And no way I can keep any extra cards here. If I keep the Flooded Strand, I'm at two. If I keep the Lorien Revealed, I'm at three, but I'm playing into days. I think I have to play around days. So I'm just dead if this doesn't work. I'm probably just dead anyway. Now I can't tap my Ancient Tombs ever again. Why switch the Plowshares? You're all I needed. I'm going to actually get Savannah to do this because that gives me green green. And then any draw, any land gives me blue blue to Uro with. Which is what I, what phase two of this plan needs to be. I have to Terminus now, go to two, draw a land, put Uro into play next turn, go back up to four, and then begin the stabilization. All right, Force Blue card with our last pieces. All right, sure. They certainly had my number that game. Okay, uh, Veil of Summer, I like. Bluster Storm, I like. I don't love Leyline of the Void. Force of Negation, also pretty mid. What are my other cuts here? I could cut an Ancient Tomb. That just, like, really messed me up. 
the deck has a lot of lands in it because you're playing a bunch of channel lands as spells anyway. And I don't love the Grim Monolith in, in grindy matchups. I actually like Grim Monolith less than I like Ancient 2. Because Grim Monolith is just there to get Shared Fade out faster, and I need to be alive when we get there. Keeping this hand, pretty stoked about it, actually. I'm just going to Flooded Strand Pass, because I can do the End Step Brainstorm upkeep Cycle Lorian Reveal trick. I can Fluster Storm a Thought Seize on turn one, if that happens. Got options. I'm not going to fight over a Ponder, though. I can also just Cycle... Or in revealed Slam Sylvan Library. Okay, I'm gonna get Trop. I'm gonna cycle for Tundra, but then I'm gonna Ancient Tomb out the library playing around days. Another play we've seen before, but I'm still pretty into it, especially now that I know this is a days matchup. Force pitching Murktide Regent. I'll take that. Good deal. That probably means they don't have Bowmaster in their hand, because that's a good card to just shove into Sylvan Library. Ponder. They shuffled their last ponder. They might actually be looking for lands here. Did not shuffle. They found Wasteland. They know I have a backup blue source in hand. Yeah, going after the Ancient Tomb. I'm really happy about that, actually. Huge relief. Basic land in the grip. I can brainstorm. If they daze a brainstorm, I think I'm okay with that. I'd rather brainstorm and maximize for drawing the fetch than not do that. Okay, I'm putting back Ancient Tomb. We're not in a hurry here. I want to keep my backup White Source. I'm already exposed to Wasteland hugely, so I don't need Basic Island. Found a Swords to Plowshares. Sweet relief. Shuffle these three lands away. Okay, another Ponder. I'm playing the Cantrip Swords to Plowshares game I want to play here. Two mana. Dothy Voidwalker. Okay. I have Swords to Plowshares for that one. Oh, I have Terminus for that one too. Yeah, I'm just going to Terminus. It's here. Let's use it while the getting's good. And then I can Ponder. Ooh, okay. I was going to say I'd love to find a blue source here, but Veil of Summer, pretty nice also. And can be cast off the Savannah that I have. And there's a Sylvan Library under this. Scam of Grief. Scam of Grief. It got a Ponder instead. Did not shuffle. Did not play a Wasteland. Ah, uh, they're Scamming a Grief. Pitching a Grief. Okay. Don't have days. Yeah. It's a BTFO to Grief Scam with Veil of Summer. Feeling good. They're going to play a Murktide as, with one card left in their hand. This looks like a Swords to Plowshare Sylvan Library for me. They very obviously don't have days. Plow the Murktide. Get it out. Sylvan Library. Okay. Bant Control half of the deck. Coming in strong. Now we just need a Shared Fate so we can actually start winning. A land. Animate Grief. They have no cards in their hand. I am going to force this pitching fluster. At this point, I just want to see a bunch of cards and be under no pressure and move things forward. Find the shared fate. Delta plus Veil Brainstorm. Do I just go to eight here? I think I do. Keep it, keep it. Ponder. There's an Uro and another land. I'll take the Uro. That's great for my life total. They are top decking over there. I'm not going to hold a Veil of Summer when I could just get a row going. And I'll get a Trop here because green's harder to come by in my deck than blue, just in case they top deck a Wasteland. A row, trigger, Lauren revealed in my hand. Okay, pass the turn. Uh, they're reanimating my Uro, just trying to cantrip rather than put grief into play. That's cool. This just draws a card and then dies again. That's kind of what my deck's about. I don't even need the shared fate. My opponent's already putting my Uro into play. Interesting they decided cycling that's better than Grief, but I guess Grief doesn't beat Uro anyway. Story checks out. Okay, I found a land. Happy with that. I don't want this Lorien revealed. Well, I'll end up with it anyway, but I don't need it right now. So I can go blue, blue, green, green, holding up Veil of Summer. I pay life, go to six. Uro puts me to nine. Yeah, I can pay it here. I can afford it. Play Automawara. Green, green, blue, blue. There it is. Uro trigger, draw Slorian revealed, and I'm just going to pass with Uro in play. Pretty good situation. I can't wait to get them with Shared Fate in game three when they have no idea what's going on. Sack's a creature, bummer. If only I could cast that out of my graveyard where it is. Beastorm, get after it. 
I am going to cycle a Lorien in the end step. I think that's just too much of that, and I would like to hit my land drops. Get another Tundra here. Library triggers. Just a lot of lands. Immediately regret cycling the Lorien. I'm going to fetch these lands away from the top of my deck, get a drop, and then send Uro back in. We're in the end game now, Stark. Uro's on the stack. Trigger, I go up to 11, put in Tundra. Definitely keeping this Lorien revealed now. This one's got on Ancestral Recall duty. They're fetching in the end step. Do they have a Mystic Sanctuary in their deck? They do. Do they want Shouldred's Edict? They want Brainstorm. Good call. Shouldred's Edict not solving the problem here. There's that B-Storm. And no play, no shuffle. Cool. Library gives me another land and a Brainstorm. I'm going to put the land on top and pay for life for the Brainstorm. Then I'm just going to go to combat and put that land into play. If they let me. Attack with a row. We're doing it. I'm actually going to put the Scalding Tarn into play. Because I, I think there's a Tundra left. But I want to manage my, my shuffles. And this Brainstorm is free money on this island. Okay, I cut just Lorien Revealed here. But I want to play the Shared Fate if I can draw it. I'm going to do the cheaper thing. Okay, confirm there's still a Tundra in the deck. It's right there. And shuffle. Get the Tundra. There's one basic island left in the deck. I still have a land drop here. I could brainstorm again, still have hope on the Shared Fate. Or I could fire the Lorien. I can brainstorm and then Lorien. I have so much mana. Okay. Start with brainstorm. Ottawa, Ancient Tomb. Those are all blanks. And Ottawa is fine. Cluster Storm could still be good here. Ancient Tomb and Besage you can chill, though. Here's my normal land drop. The first one came off Uro. Get the island. Officially out of fetchables. And I would like to Ancestral Recall, please. Handful of Uros. Bummer. I have to go to discard. I'll discard an Uro. Sauron's Ransom in the end step. How about Fluster Storm? Leaving up the Veil. I just don't want them to even start to get back into this game. And now I don't have to go to discard. I have Uros to pitch to force. It's a good deal. We're in an awkward spot now where I'd rather be my deck against an Uro than their deck. Like if I shared fate and they draw swords to plowshares and a white source. Oh no, there's no white sources left. I've played out all my lands. Yeah, okay. They're drawing a lot of blanks if I shared fate. Okay, I'm into that. I'm back in. I was out for a second, but I'm back. Yeah, so all the white cards they would draw are blanks. There's no other sources left. That's cool. I had not considered that angle of literally making the important half of my deck uncastable. Another brainstorm from them. And another pass with no land, no shuffle, no creature. Library trigger. Put back two Misty Rainforests that don't help me. I'm out of shuffles, so I guess I'm just bashing here. In you go. Draw the Misty. I'll play out the Besaju because... More mana doesn't hurt, and Besiju is not going to affect this matchup in any meaningful way, I can't imagine. And I can spam another Uro here. Let's clear the top of my deck. Keep the one that's already alive for real. I am not going to put Misty Rainforest into play. It's better if I go to discard and put it in the graveyard for Uro to eat than it is to play it where there's nothing to fetch. Well, they have a spell on my instep, a Sauron's Ransom. I can Force of Will this. I like this because I still have multiple Plows and Veil, which checks a lot of the boxes against their deck. And that Sauron's Ransom would have cleared their Brainstorm, in addition to just the card advantage it provides. And they're just drawing through that Brainstorm again. There's the Fate! Okay. Do I seal their Fate, or do I just uh, win this game without revealing my secret plan? I have Ponder on top of my deck with Terminus under it. Attack with Uro, and they are dead on board. If I shared Fate right now, I know they're dead. I think maybe playing this won't necessarily give away what I'm doing. And it does 100% lock up this game. Because they're going to draw a Terminus right now that they can't use. And I get the value of they have to pause to read this in a time when we're both pretty close to low on our clocks. Which might matter if I get an earlier shared Fate than this in Game 3. I'm going to decline Sylvan Library just for clock considerations and attack. Oh wait. I just get all these, right? Yeah, I just get all their cards, and I don't have to pay four to keep them because they're not in my hand. I will accept. 
I have a Voidwalker, a uh, Brainstorm. I just drew a Murktide Regent. <laughs> yeah. Insult to injury. Take all your good cards while locking you out of the game. That was sick. They've seen the shared fate. I don't know if they understand the full ramifications of it yet, because it would be really hard to figure that out on the fly, what that actually means. But I do like my configuration. I don't like Chalice on one, because I have 16 one-drops of my own that are all important for the matchup. Yeah, that's the only thing I'd really do here. Force of Will Uro. I like Uro a lot in the matchup, but I don't think this is a keepable hand. I'm going to mulligan it. I like this way more. Keep and bottom the City of Traders. Shared Fate is at least a blue card for Force, if nothing else. Just Wasteland go. They're going to cycle a troll here. That's their plan. Good thing I have the basic. Got him. Ponder found a bunch of lands and another Shared Fate. Like, I don't really... I don't hate the, the land and the extra blue card. I'm a little worried about the complete lack of white interaction. I'm going to shuffle this. All right, Sylvan Library. Rewarded. That's better than any of the cards I saw. Cycle the Troll. Yeah, having to shuffle a Ponder that had two lands in it against face-up Wasteland. A little disappointing. Force pitching Shared Fate on this. All right, cool. That just happened. Happened very quickly, too. Which means I'm going to slam Sylvan Library. Okay. Uh, does that mean they have another reanimate? If they just let that resolve so quickly and then they did have force in their hand? Interesting. Yep. Okay. Confirmed. So your opponents are always telling you what's in your hand, in their hand, if you're if you care to listen. Okay, now I have to ponder into a swords to plow shares before I'm dead. Play this polluted delta first so I don't get dazed. Bronze bombshell, what's up? I'm gonna shuffle this. I'm not ready for that one yet. And looks like we're taking a hit from Troll. And they ponder to follow up. Kind of hoping they, you know, stop doing stuff after that explosive start, but welcome to scam. If they thought these were grief here, I could just cycle away the Lorian and it's a blank. Which doesn't solve my problems, but it is fun. Oof. Alright, well, I have to fetch in response to this for a tundra and then cycle in response, because I can't be putting Lorian revealed in the void for them. I'll grab a trop. All right, Terminus, the other Terminus. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, looks like we're just kind of flooding out and dying here. Yeah, I go to three here. I, I'm literally on Terminus or dead. I guess I could brainstorm into two plows, maybe. But they put me to three. Even if I can answer one of these things, I'm still at three for the remaining thing. Terminus. Ah, oh, you friggin'. All right, drew the plow. A turn late to... To buy myself four turns. Okay. Uh, we at least did the thing in one game. Playing against one of the best decks in the format. I can't feel too bad about that. On the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. The easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats. Including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations. So you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play in round two with an unassuming, perfectly normal bank control hand. Nothing going on here that you need to worry about. I can start on the basic with all these Lorien Revealeds. I am not worried about my long-term mana prospects. Do I want... I just said I'm not worried about my long-term mana prospects. So I'm going to keep the Ponder, hide the Sylvan Library on top in case I get discarded here. That's the card I really care about right now. Seat of the Synod, okay. Seat of the Synod, go. That's a relief. Fetch for Trop and rock this Sylvan Library. That's the turn. Okay, at the very least, I'm going to play an Uro next turn. And Sylvan Library plus Uro is an interaction. Patches a Hulahan. See if we can get ahead of this thing. Library found Ancient Tomb and two more lands. Okay. Put back the Ancient Tomb. I don't need that. And is Ottawa or something I'm interested in? If we get into a locked game situation, I think I want to pay for for the Tundra. And then shuffle for Savannah. 
because this guarantees the next land drop. This gives me blue, blue, green, green for Uro. And I can still ponder here. Pretty good use of a turn. I don't love paying a bunch of life versus patches. Force of will. This is something I want. This is something I care about. Am I on team terminus for life right now? One, two, three, four, five card or four cards in my graveyard other than the Uro, which means I can cycle Lori and play Uro. Yes, I do want Force of Will. All right. Oh, right. The Ponder was on the stack. Even I even more want Force of Will. Even easier than I thought it was going to be. Urza Saga. Another patches. This patches turns on Thoughtcast, but I'd rather win a fight over Uro than anything they might do here. Unloading the baubles. Now we see why their start looks so slow. It's because they were investing in the automatons, who will very soon be bigger than Uro. And I'm taking a massive smash of damage here. Bobbling the Lorien Revealed in my hand, looking at the Lorien Revealed on top of my deck, and they see Ottawa in my hand. If they get to draw three, then I get to look at three. I can't keep very many of them because of the insane pressure I'm under. I'm going to put back Grim Monolith and Lorien Revealed, and then cycle Lorien Revealed because I don't want another one. I'm looking for Terminus at this point. Get a Tundra. Play Tundra. Play Uro. Uro's on the stack. Uro triggers. I'm at 14. Tropical Island comes into play. I have the Shared Fate. What does that mean? Um, the Urza Saga is a concern. I actually can't Shared Fate until I Terminus here. Gotta get control of this situation. The first patch is, is now the same size as Uro. Ooh, do they even attack? And I'll trade all day. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hold back on that. Nice. Happy with that turn. That could have been a lot worse. Brainstorm. If I find a Terminus here, I can set it up for their turn. Swords of Plowshares, I don't hate. Okay. Um, if I put Plow Ancient Tomb on top, I can attack and brainst put an Ancient Tomb. I just don't think I can pay for it here, but I do want all these cards. Okay, put on top and put on top. I'm going to start by going to combat. Back, drop in this Ancient Tomb, who helps me get over the, the Ward Hump in an exciting way. They just take the damage, of course. And Adawara costs three, and then Ward is two, and then Plow, Ward is two. Oh, if I had actually just kept... I think in my head Ward was four, because there's two of them, and also that's how Kappa works. Which is obviously not where we actually are. Okay, I'm going to Brainstorm now. Found two more Brainstorms. What happens if I shove Shared Fate right now? I probably just lose to a bunch of bullshit. Okay, put back Shared Fate and another Brainstorm. Then I can plow one of these and Ottawara the Construct. I think that's the way to go here. 7-7 seven, seven Construct in play. I'm going to Ottawara the Construct now before they can Pithing Needle. Yeah, I think if I had mapped this out better, I could have been able to source the Plowshares without tapping Ancient Tomb. If I had just kept Brainstorm on top and Plow in my hand, like if the top of my deck was Brainstorm right now, I'd have this land on tap. Either Spellbomb. That's solid. Another Saga, stop! Cool your jets over there. Another patch is uh, basically on Terminus or Bus here anyway, so go ahead. I do have to plow the one that is larger at this time. If they try to use Spellbomb to save their own patches, that would be pretty awesome. I don't know why they would do that, but it would be cool for me if they did. Be a lot cooler if you did. If that's gone, I go to nine from this attack. They probably Spellbomb during. Before my attacks on my turn. Still in the market for a Terminus here. Happy to hardcast it. Not even picky. Shared Fate, Ponder, Brainstorm. Put Shared Fate on top. And I actually have to put the Brainstorm on top. As much as I don't love that. If Uro gets to attack here. Then I end up with the Brainstorm. Okay, Uro gets to attack. They have accepted just blocking it with their larger creature. As an acceptable thing to do. They can also just take six and not risk losing two artifacts here. Smart. All right. They know what they're doing over there. 
now I get to start digging for real. Ancient tomb, force negation. All right, force negation not helpful. And is ancient tomb something I want? I can go to eight this turn. I can use Lorian reveal to shuffle right now, but then I'd have a land in my hand. All right, I'm putting back ancient tomb, and I'm dead this turn if I don't find terminus anyway. Or I guess swords of plowshares could kill the construct. Just deciding when the appropriate time to tap Ancient Tomb is going to be. I'll just start with it, because I need to use this colorless mana somehow. Okay, grabbing another Tundra, and then casting a Brainstorm first, or Ponder first. Ponder can shuffle the Brainstorm cards, but I don't want to look at these cards again. Ponder sees three cards in a straight line, could get rid of them, then Brainstorm sees totally fresh ones. I can also brainstorm and terminus on their turn if it's in this ponder pile. Okay, none of the above. Just gonna shuffle this away. Shuffle. Force of will. Okay, it's getting dire here. We're running out of juice. Brainstorm. Now we actually need the ancient tomb. This has to be terminus plus ancient tomb or terminus plus a brainstorm that can fire it on their turn. Ooh, they're firing force of wills here. They decided it's time to interact. I'll force you back. I agree, this is important. Uh, a bunch of bricks. Okay. I'm dead. All right. I saw a lot of cards that game, and they, they weren't helpful. Null Rod comes in. I think it's just Null Rod here. And cards that come out are Grimonolith, because that's an artifact. Not a combo with Null Rod, it turns out. In we go. You could just load up this deck with more sweepers if you want to. Like, Bronze Bombshell could definitely be Supreme Verdict. If that's how, if the game needs a stable board to shared fate, maybe that's just correct to play it that way. I'm keeping this hand with lands and spells, and I'm giving no respect to Wasteland because they're not going to have it. Shuffle this, Force Negation, not really good here. Brainstorm, I like. Ancient Tomb, Patches. Do I just force it this game? Have I learned anything? I can plow it two turns from now. All right, I've learned to respect this card. Get out. And now they're dumping out bobbles. Bobbling my top card. Is it a Null Rod? It's a Boseju. Okay, I like that card. I am going to fire my Brainstorm now. Source to Plowshares on top of the deck with Tropical Island under it. I can decide, based on what they do this turn, if Source to Plowshares is going to help me. Okay, Source to Plowshares. Currently not helpful, because I can just Boseju the Saga. And they saw Swords to Plowshares in my hand. I am going to fetch here. Get Tropical Island. There's the Shared Fate. It's all coming together. I think I just besage you them here. My hand is basically already good cards. Funny to say that about Shared Fate. But it's a card relevant to my plan. Hers is Bobble. Mishra's Bobble. Mishra's Bobble. Mox Opal. Uh, are we getting capped here? Or even worse, thought monitored, thought cast. Chalice on one. I suppose I should brainstorm in response. Didn't want to use this right now. Brainstorm. Okay. Uh, well, it's about as good as it gets off a of brainstorm here. Tarot plus shared fate. All right, how much damage can they put into play right now? That's going to be the last question. Emery, she can cast patches out of the graveyard. Oh, they're bobbling the plow that's on top of my deck. All right, I'm shoving Shared Fate here. And then we can uh, find out together how in trouble I am. Two cards in your hand. Please don't have a counter spell. I love the pause every single time when you cast the spell of the opponent just reading it. Okay, cool. They're going to draw a Swords to Plowshares that's turned off from their own Chalice on their next turn. And then I just need Uro to do better than Emery plus Patches for the rest of the game. If they bobble me here, they draw off my deck, which is full of one drops, and their deck's not. Nice Chalice of the Void. Got them. They bobbled Swords to Plowshares. They bobbled to see the other Swords to Plowshares. There's just plows everywhere. And it's fun, because on Magic Online, their exiled cards end up in my exile zone, because I technically own them. They're targeting patches from the graveyard, but the only artifacts they can play for the rest of the game are ones that come out of my deck, one per turn under Emery, or what's left in their hand currently. All right, Sylvan Library exiles my deck pretty quickly. 
Luckily, that doesn't matter. Okay, what do I get out of your deck? A Kappa. And that card's pretty solid. I'll start with Uro, though. And I draw another card from their deck. Orcish Bowmaster, that was your last card? Well, good thing I don't draw cards. I exile cards from your deck. That was a pretty solid last card to have in hand, though. Okay, I gain three life, exile a card from their library, which is an ancient tomb, unfortunately. I need to exile a blue source from their deck to get my Uro in. And they can just pay like crazy, or not pay. Just exile my deck like crazy. I can play Kappa next turn, who is the largest cat on the block for now. They're attacking me for five and drawing extra cards. Oh, they got my City of Traders. What a nice one for their deck. It's funny when they bobble me, they see the card they're about to take. They should be bobbling themselves to know what I'm about to draw. Another Ancient Tomb. Curses. Well, I'll keep playing them. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Ugh. I have to go to seven to play the Kappa. I'm taking more than that if I don't play it, though, so there it comes. If they have a Force of Will in the Exile pile, I think I just die here. Okay, 5-5 five, five Kappa's in play. I'm at seven. If they just send the team in, they get to kind of bleed me for two per turn, because if I block Patches, they can just replay it. If I block Bowmaster or Army, then Patches crunches for a huge amount. Second library, okay. They will have my deck empty in no time. I just need a seat of the Synod or Island out of them before that happens. Emery, Bobble. This has certainly created a weird game. To be determined if it's a good or bad game, but it is a weird game. I get a Urza Saga. I don't hate that one. Put that right in. Okay, uh... They are under some real pressure now, because I'll have a 2-2, then a 3-3. I don't have anything to tutor, but I'm, I'm happy to put some creatures on this board as they continue to exile my whole deck. Hey, they played Ottawara, which kills the City of Traders. Are they going to start revealing Lorien here? They can't plow because of their own Chalice. There's nothing in my deck that they can play that removes Chalice. Ironically, if they played Nullrod right now, it would make patches big enough to... Shove a lethal attack. Ooh, no attack. Coward. Now I'm going to get Urza Saga waking up and, and getting good blocks. Reasonable blocks. Yo, Ottawa is here. Okay. That's the blue source I've been waiting for. Green, green, blue, blue. Put Uro on the stack. I'm sure they have counter spells by this point. That's all right. They got to spend them some time. And I can't afford to Ancient Tomb here. They continue exiling my deck three cards at a time, or five cards at a time now. And the token coming into play triggers Kappa, so I actually have a 6-6 six, six in combat. Ooh, they have a Tundra now. Bad news, everybody. But then playing my Force of Will was card number five for Uro in my graveyard. Emery gets to play Bobble. Automaton to 6-6. Six, six. Was I supposed to try to push Lethal this turn? Like, if I had made Construct on my turn, attack for six, block their 6-6... Six, six, with my 2-2, make another one. Hey, I think I had them dead in two turns with no meaningful interaction coming out of my deck to help them. Yeah, I think I just borked it. Hopefully their deck has a few more artifacts in it that I can use. I am going to pay the two life to get Construct going. I think that's really important here. A bauble. Okay, I like that. And I will be activating the Construct rather than sending Uro again this turn. Tutor for nothing. Oh, I can check what their outs still are here. And there's one Terminus in here, but that's worse for them than it is for me. Okay. They haven't seen the bombshell yet. They don't even know. A bobble triggers Kappa. Yeah, I think I just try to push for game. I can block, and if I find an artifact in the top two cards of their deck, I win. I wish I had thought of this last turn. I'll bobble my deck to see what you're about to draw. Source of Plowshares. You can't play that one. I get Thought Monitor. Heck yeah. They get to Library. The rest of my deck away. 13 cards left. Please play Bronze Bombshell. Go out like a boss. They played the other Tundra. If they have the Terminus, they can stabilize, but then they can't win anymore. Five mana in the pool. Six mana in the pool. I think they just realized they lose if they Terminus. 
they have the terminus. They just put six white, white, and four others in the pool. Like it's pretty clear what the plan is on that. I think what they actually need to do is kill patches somehow, and then target it with Emery from the graveyard, then terminus, and then when when you can cast it from the graveyard, but the terminus is already resolved. But now it's too big. I I couldn't kill it if I wanted to. Oh, the second main terminus. This is game over if they cast it. All right, cool. Uh, I know they can't win anymore. We did it. We shared their fate. And I'm up two minutes on the clock, which is the really important thing here. Another Kappa. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or I think Uro is better in this spot. Blue, blue, green, green. Because they can't force currently. Because they don't have cards in their hand. You can't pitch cards from exile to cast force from exile. And uh, I think this is game. Like, not only are they dead on board, but they're hard locked. Sylvan Library, get more information about my deck. I'm just fully F6 at this point, waiting for them. They don't realize that the clock is their most precious resource right now, and they're just in the tank trying to figure out if they can actually win this game. They play the Savannah, played an Uro. Okay, this is great. They're just going to go to seven here, waste more time, not realizing that they can't win. Maybe they think they can deck me, like survive for one turn, empty my deck past the turn, but that doesn't actually win the game here. Another Uro. I love this. I'm F6. Just go ahead. Burn as much clock as you like. Thanks for the Uros. Yeah, they're probably planning like a brainstorm, or they can't brainstorm, like a double Lorian reveal turn next turn. And like, aha, gotcha, but not really. Attack with a row. And I'm just going to F6 and not cast the spell. And I'm going to continue F6ing while they exile the rest of my deck with Sylvan Libraries. Oh, right, the Libraries. Get me empty. They don't even need to plan a Lorian Reveal turn. They have my whole deck in exile here. All these face down cards are things they have access to right now, and none of those are going to remove Shared Fate unless I've punted deck building somehow. Oh, two Shared Fates. What does that do? Nothing? Choose re replacement effect. Uh, this one, I guess. <laughs> it's the same thing. And then, okay, they conceded. I was about to debate if I'm supposed to just keep F6ing. And wasting their time. Okay, that was awesome. A true shared fate grind out sesh. Chalice the Void's actually really interesting because Chalice on zero is rough against their deck. However, when we get into the the shared fate phase of the game, I don't want Chalice on zero around because it's bad for my deck. I still think force and negation is appropriate. The ley lines are so shitty because the Emery is the only reason they were playing that game at all. However, the ley lines are complete blanks if they're not in my opener. I have no black mana to cast these things, but they do. And if we get into a shared fate game where they can cast Ley Lane of the Void off of two Mox Opals and lock out my Uros, then we're really just in a clock circle jerk. I'm not bringing those in. I am up three minutes going into this game, which is the most important measure of anything. I'm going to keep this. It has the ponder. I could force a chalice on one if I need to. Losing a shared fate, I don't mind pitching the extra one of those. Petal, spire, something's happening. It looks like a chalice. Chalice, force pitching, shared fate, drew the tundra. Oh, well, I'm, I'm just playing quickly now. I should have played tundra to play the ponder, but in my brain I was like, I'm going to play this land, which did not need to happen. Okay, Swords to Plowshares, Ancient Tomb, Tundra, all on the top here. I would like access to the, the Plow in case they do something like Emery this turn that I need to respect. Ooh, they were all in on that. Sylvan Library, get in. We've seen Bowmaster in their deck. Gotta respect it with this Plow. Really interesting, they missed their land drop twice and didn't pop Bobble in between. They're valuing Affinity more than they're valuing hitting a natural actual land drop. Okay, uh, I have the Shared Fate next turn, if I'm not dead by then. So if I put Ottawara on top and pay for it to keep the Brainstorm, then I play Ancient Tomb now and pass. I can plow anything, even a Patches, right now. I think... No, I want to save the Brainstorm for post-Shared Fate. I'd love to find a Force of Will right now. No such luck. Put back. 
Terminus and pay four on the Ottawara? Or do I even need this? No, I'll just fetch a normal land. Fetch a Savannah. And I'm going to shove the homie here. Let's go. They can force this or they can die to it. Those are the... That's the option here. Okay, they did have force. Fair enough. I got one shared fate left in my deck. I might have gone a little aggressive on that, given that they're not doing anything. Now I have to actually slow down and find an arrow and play normal. A bunch of bricks. Put Ancient Tomb and Tundra on top, and then I'll ponder my way out of these cards I don't want. Shuffle. It's just more lands in a Sylvan Library. Null Rod. Get wrecked. Bang. Uh, oh, they didn't even pop the bobble in response. Challenging stuff. And if they find their land, Bowmaster is on. Shit. Yeah, okay. Well, I have short supply shares for Bowmaster. Another Chalice. I'll force that, pitching a Brainstorm. A Seiju, hello. Library on top. Brainstorm on top. I don't like that the Baseju gives them a land forever. Like, if they miss here, they just don't get anything anyway. I think I'm going to chill. This might be risky, but if they just... They have... It's turn seven. They've missed five land drops at this point. Just miss one more. Yeah, okay. Rewarded. Now they don't get any constructs, and I get to keep my Baseju. And if they're gonna... Bowmaster, now's the time. Okay, I can brainstorm in response to make sure that I have some action here, or I could plow this thing and hope they just don't force it. I guess I'll brainstorm just to be sure. And now I have force backup. Good news, everyone. I'm gonna... Ooh, the 1-1 one -one is actually a trouble. I think I might have to force this thing. Okay, good news. It worked. Okay, I gotta put two cards back that were drawn this turn, which is everything except Swords to Plowshares. Put back the library. And do I want to pay for? Yeah, I'll pay for. Right now, a window's open for a pretty nice ponder. Lorien revealed I could cast next turn. Yeah, I'll put Lorien in my hand and pass. They get to tutor this turn, but then their land's gone. If they have a Bowmaster on the way out, I can cycle Lorien revealed to clear the brainstorm, and that solves both of those problems. Box Opal still doesn't work under Null Rod. Another saga, disappointing. And a patches. Okay. I mean I can besage you patches, but that turns on the saga. I'm actually I'm actually in some trouble here. Thought cast, that's pretty good. Okay, do I want to draw brainstorm? Uh, I'm gonna cycle and just see a bunch of new cards and hit a land drop here. I have white white and I have green green. I think white's more important to this matchup. I'll take a tundra. That also is a tundra that they can't have if I find my shared hit fate. Revealed. Hello, hey buddy. Glad to see you. A Lauren revealed on top. Tundra on top. Play Tundra. I can Uro and then plow patches. I can also plow patches, then Uro. I'm worried about force. If I plow patches, I guess gaining life is, is just worth doing here. Okay. Uro. Trigger. Get Tundra. I want to plow on their turn so they can't force some negation. Force of Will is going to get me either way. Oh, they can Metallic Rebuke. Oh, we have seen that card. All right. I'll just do it now and hope they can't play five artifacts if they force this. All right. It's just gone. Cool. And I'll be able to Uro before they can tutor Soul Guide Lantern, which is Graveyard Hate that does affect Uro even through Null Rod. Oh, they found the land. They're determined to not make this easy on me. I'll give them that. Orion revealed. Brainstorm plow. Okay. Top, top. And now I have Uro. Green, green, blue, blue. Fire this guy in. Ooh, they had the force. That sucks. Alrighty. I'm going to plow one of the constructs. And I'll besage you the other and hope that they don't have a Soul Guide Lantern to tutor for in the meantime. We're going to go to their turn. I guess with one card in hand, they couldn't have forced me on my turn either. All right. Uh, you can commit to your, your line here. The clocks are getting dangerously close. Okay, plow in response. If they have forced blue card right now, that's my fault, and I threw it. Should have done this on my turn when they had one card in hand. Okay, it's gone. Unpunished. I can besage you the other one. Soul Guide Lantern's the most annoying thing they can do to four. They got a redundant Mox Opal. 
Just getting bad draws out of the way, I suppose. And they're done. They've had quite enough. A proper shared fate victory. Count it. Let's go. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play against the Yorian strategy in round three. I'm going to keep my opponent's username is Jackie Brown. A less celebrated Tarantino movie, but one that I like a lot. Robert De Niro, Sam Jackson. Chris Tucker, great movie. Pam Greer plays Jackie Brown. Okay, I think the best way to play around Wasteland if they are Death in Texas is the Ottawara. All right, we're just boated up here. Set on lands forever. Got in a row. Sylvan Library is about to get moving. Caracas, okay. Uh, Aether Vial. Is this a card that I care about? Probably. I'm just going to force that and get cranking with the Sylvan Library. Hope they don't have the, uh, the asshole, the Spirit of the Lab, on turn two here. Oh, they have nothing at all on turn two. What a deck. I'm going to put back the Trop, keep the island, and then fetch for Tundra. Or I think I want Savannah here, actually. Just round out my white. Round out my white and green. Then Uro drops the other Tundra in. And we're, we're cooking. Uh-oh. Not only a land, but a black one. Suddenly Orcish Bowmasters is on the menu. Stoneforge Mystic, okay. Of all the two drops they could have played, I'm uh, not upset about that one. Relatively not upset about that one. B-Skull in the hand. I'm not cycling Lorian and Revealed. We're in Ancestral Recall mode already. I'd love a Swords to Plowshares, though. Oh, Terminus. Uh, I will set that up for next turn. Or I could just put it in my hand, cast it, but that makes casting Uro this turn not good. But Flooded Strand on top, and I will pay for to keep the Terminus. Fetch away the Flooded Strand. One, two, three, four, five. I could draw three cards now, hardcast Terminus next turn. Yeah, I think that's worth doing. I think that's better than committing a second Uro. It's possible that they already have the Cauldron in their hand, which is why they went for Batter Skull. Or they were hedging that if I remove Stoneforge, Batter Skull is more castable. Okay, cool. They just have nothing. Uh, they might have Bowmaster, but they should respond to the library if they do. Okay, they don't. Ancient Tomb's out of here. Flooded Strand is out of here. And do I want to get them further committed to the board before I Wrath here? Or do I just send it? I don't have that many rats, is the problem. Caracas can clear the Uro, which is also a problem. I just play the Bombshell. Uh, now, I'm just going to Terminus now, because even if they flip in a... Weapon in response, the Terminus will then clear the germ. There's no way to stack this, so they actually get a creature here. What's my deck's plan against Caracas? I guess it's play your deck against you. Though I can't play any Legends out of their deck, because they can bounce them into their hand and then use them against me once we start sharing fate. Okay, they are committing... This indicates to me Flicker Wisp. Oh, okay, they just had a completely non-creature weapon. But putting in Batter Skull or Cauldre there... Turns on Flicker Wisp, where you just get to reset the germ later. Apparition. Okay. Bummer. If only my hand had more of those in it. City of Traitors. Okay. Uh, I believe I want the Uro out of my graveyard here. Green, green, blue, blue. Oh, I did too much blue, not enough green. Green, green, blue, blue. There we go. Send the Uro in. Draw a card. Come on, Shared Fate, right now. I will put in the City of Traitors, actually. And I'm going to Lorien Revealed. Because City of Traitors, I can keep this if I use Uro Triggers to put lands into play. It is when you play a land, it's not landfall. Okay, they're starting to get stuff going, which I don't care for, but... Oh, Thoughtseize. All right, have a peek. My hand's full of bangers. Look at this bronze bombshell. Read it and weep. 
Bronze Bombshell lines up extremely poorly against Umasawa's Jute, I must say. Okay, they plowed that. Cool. They'd rather it be gone gone than use Caracas, but by plowing it, they can get Jute going this turn. Okay, I got big looks this turn at the shared fate of Lorien Revealed. Hello? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I have 11 mana. I can ponder and then Lorien Revealed and still cast Shared Fate. I guess if that's the line, I should just start on Lorien Revealed. Cast Lorien Revealed. Tell me about Lorien. Uh, Lorien tells me that there's no Shared Fates here. I can Uro and also... Sylvan Library here. I should tap Tundra if I'm going to do it that way. Okay, here's Uro. Trigger. There's a Terminus. That's a later situation. And Sylvan Library. Reinvest in this thing. I'm not going to play Ancient Tomb as an actual land because I like the City of Traders being in play and I have enough Uros to keep leveraging it. Let's see if they want to just pump 6 damage in or if they're going to stack up counters on Jute. Yeah, they're just pumping damage. That's also what I would do against a control deck. Especially one that has shown Sylvan Library as a source of guard advantage in the deck. Recruiter of the Guard. For Bowmaster. And... Oh, please cast this thing. Yeah, Terminus. Okie dokie. I take some damage here. I decline my library trigger. You do not have to draw these cards. No thanks. I'm good. And I found the Shared Fate. GG, sucker. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four... Five, six, bloop, those are gone. And I get a creature out of it. What a deal. And Ancient Tomb, I lose the... Yeah, I'm just slamming the Shared Fate here. It is important to remember that their deck has Yorion in Exile, so they do have one card they can access after all the other weirdness occurs. But I'm very quickly going to have their deck in my hand because I have Sylvan Library. Their hand is Batter Skull and one Mystery card. The Caracas makes this a little awkward because my primary win con just doesn't work. All right, they're just killing my illusion token in response to shared fate. Why not? Better now than never. And now I'm going to ponder and start taking cards out of their deck. And ponder's extra funny because I get to set up what they get. So I'm going to draw this brainstorm. They're going to get this flooded strand. And then there's a source of plowshares under it. Or no, I get, I get none of this. <laughs> shit, 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 shit. I should have put the Flooded Strand on top. Alright, I'm going to shuffle my library. I outsmarted myself. I was busy laughing about how smart I am and did it wrong. <laughs> Classic Bosch and Roll. Okay. Uh, they're drawing from my deck now. I'm drawing from theirs. I have Sylvan Library and Lauren revealed. They have a Tropical Island. Batter Skull is a unique item here because they can pick it up and put it down. I was supposed to ponder for a, a Force of Will before I played Shared Fate. I think I blew it. But their deck has Skyclave. Or, that doesn't get that. Their deck has Solitude in it, which is now in my Exile pile. Just pay in the full number here. Thalia, Plow, Solitude. I will play your planes. And then, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana, if I don't want to tap Ancient Tomb, which I kind of don't. Uh, I can Brainstorm, just get three more of your cards. Oh, but I have to put two on my own back. Not really interested in doing that. Okay, never mind. I'm not casting Brainstorm this game. How do I want to handle this? Oh, eventually I'll get a Wasteland and hit the Caracas, then I win. Okay, that's how I want to handle this. This is weird, but I like it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I am going to cast the Lorien Revealed. I'll take two for the Solitude. I'll get it back, like, immediately. There's the Wasteland. Solitude. I'm just worried about them drawing one of my forces. But they have to have two blue to cast it, so I think it's fine to pass the turn here. I can plow and solitude. I would like them to commit Umazawa's Jute to the situation. There it is. And then solitude. I go to 10, play your solitude, and they scooped immediately. <laughs> yeah, shared fate. I have very little for this matchup. Null Rod hits their equipment and their... Aether Vials, which is a, a way I'd rather interact with it than Force Negation. And Null Rod post Jared Fate actually matters because that Batter Skull was a recursive threat. I think I actually do like the Grim Monolith, even alongside the Null Rods because slamming Shared Fate quickly in this matchup could just flip it because they don't have counter magic. If it's on the stack, it's happening. Okay, I will keep my hand that can cast 
Null Rod, or Sylvan Library on turn two. Marsh Flats. Thoughtsies. I think we're losing Sylvan Library here. Oh my goodness. We lost Sylvan Library. I'm going to play the Tundra. I have Lorian Revealed to replace it, even if they waste me. Stone Forge Mystic. Okay. Alter is pretty good here. It doesn't care about Null Rod or Vaseju. Oh, but they went with Batter Skull instead. I guess that one... That one cares about Vaseju. Interesting. All right, cycling, getting a drop, slamming the Null Rod. They may just already have the Cauldra. They just thought seized me. Why would you hedge if you didn't already have the good one? Yeah, they're doing it main phase, which they didn't do last game. Yeah, it all makes sense. It's all here. All the pieces are in place. I have Ottawara, but I have to take 10 from this thing before that matters. Tropical Island, and I guess I pass here. They've got a bunch of mana. I have to take a boatload from this. So I'll be at 10 when I can Ottawara. And then I'll go to 5 from the Batter Skull hit. And then I can Vaseju the Batter Skull. Pretty far behind at that point. Ottawara was a good addition, though. I would be just freaking dead otherwise. I'm going to fetch in response to Stoneforge activation because I don't know if they're on the opposition agent level of bullshit, but I'm not going to get got by that. I refuse. Okay, there's Batter Skull. Wasteland, tough beats. Bounce the germ in response. Make sure to bounce the germ, not the cauldra. And they can flicker wisp and just reset this. I'm definitely behind. I needed a white spell way before this point of the game. And I'm going to four. And they have additional spells to cast, which is bad news. Lauren blows up my null rod. Sure. That does add damage to the board. Okay, ponder. Not a bad find here. Terminus is on top of my deck. That's interesting. Okay. Grim Monolith, Terminus, Uro. I will take the Uro right now. I'm going to play this Beseju, and I'm going to pass right now. The game plan here is narrowly survive Batter Skull, and then Terminus to stabilize. They can bounce the Batter Skull here, but yeah, maybe I'm not supposed to untap for them, or let them untap. If they tap this Loran, I can Terminus. Okay, that's in their hand. What was I worried about? I was worried about them re-equipping Cauldra. Did I need to worry about that? Yeah, fetch. Oh, if they have Bowmaster here, I'm literally dead. I'm at one. That's a black land. Stoneforge, okay. You're saying there's a chance. They went for Lion Sesh. That's a long-term annoyance. Oh, at least I'll Terminus here. My top card is Grim Monolith. I don't want that. So I'm going to cycle Lorian Revealed for a trop. I'm going to play the Uro, who immediately eats shit to the Lion Sash. But at least the game is occurring. Okay, we begin the, the massive comeback right now. Comeback of the century. Lion Sash sucks, but it resolves. Immediately eating Uro. That's the correct time to eat Uro. One, two, three, four, five, six. They have six mana. Next turn, they could just equip Cauldra. Their hand is Batter Skull and one unknown. They also have three mana up. They could pop Yorion in hand, or they could leave up Sash mana. They did reach for the Yorion. That can flicker Cauldra next turn and reset it. That Sword of Plowshares is not bad. I'm not sure if it's good, but it's not bad. I'm going to brainstorm because this Bronze Bombshell is uh, rotting. Two Plows and a Ponder. Put back Monolith Bombshell. I'm going to use Ponder to very likely shuffle. Yeah, shuffle this. The Brainstorm's no good. Delta. I'm just going to plow the Lion Sash before it gets any bigger. And pass the turn. I guess I'm supposed to let them draw the land and excitedly equip Cauldra before I plow there. All right, Thoughtsies. Well, I'm dead. Plowing the Cauldra on the, the rebuy was my big plan here. Going for Yorion, that's pretty safe with the Caracas. Oh, I'm way behind on time. I should just concede. All right, never mind. I was going to take a draw step, but knowing that the clock is the primary win condition. Right back in. On the play for game three, both Terminus and a bunch of lands. No good. Uh Oh, Lorian Revealed fixes everything. Keep. And bottom the Terminus. I think the Grim Model Null Rod combo is pretty awkward. Oh, but I have Brainstorms in my hand. I think I'm actually bottoming the Grim Monolith. And my plan is to cycle for uh, Tundra. 
It's like a lore and reveal for Tundra. Use Brainstorm to do stuff up to and including set up Terminus and hit my next land drops. I can also just slam Null Route on turn two. I hope they lead on either vial. Prismatic Vista. Show me the vial. Show me the vial. Swamp. The either vial. We did it. All right. Cycle Lorraine revealed for Tundra. I want to make sure my white is available. That's the most important color in this matchup. The Seiju, not bad. Vile, bang, counter your shit. If they just go land Bowmaster here, my hand quickly falls apart, so don't celebrate too soon. There's the land. And it's a main phase thing, it's Thalia. Okay, she's not too bad. Burrow. That's not a non-creature. I think I'm going to lead on Brainstorm. Just in case I find a fetch or want to do anything different. Okay. If I put Misty Terminus back in that order, I can play Tundra right now. And I can Terminus them on my next draw step. And then Thalia is out of the way. Maybe I'm supposed to put it two down and try to Terminus them on their turn. Wasteland, okay. Thoughtseize, okay. Probably take Brainstorm here. You don't want to be taking Uro. Yeah, the Wasteland does not actually take me off what I'm trying to do here. Thalia gets in. I am going to Terminus here. Or, yeah, I'll just take the pressure off and make my cantrips and stuff better. Play the Flooded Strand and pass. There's a Misty on top. I can decide next turn if I want that or not. I probably do. I Ganjo, Stoneforge. Lion Sash doesn't work here, so they get the Cauldra. Thought sees my Uro. Thanks. Okay. Deal. Okay. Uh, now I definitely want to draw this Misty Rainforest. That lets me keep my Besaju and keep my Graveyard Flush for Uro activities. Trop and I guess another Trop. My double white spells are not very common. My double blue or my double green spell is literally my whole game plan right now. Okay. Uro's in. Blue to Delta's in. They know my hand is Beseju that I can use right now. It doesn't help against Cauldra, but it's here. This Cauldra is not a good race for them. If they're attacking me for functionally two a turn, but I'm drawing two cards a turn and they're taking six, not a good deal. This is going to be a defense Cauldra unless they can plow Uro otherwise. Ooh, they have the Caracas. So now they can push damage, but I still get to play Uro and draw extra cards. Looks like they're going to give me the opportunity to block Cauldra first, which I'm for sure not doing. But that is the correct play. At least give me a chance to mess up. I'm going to move to combat. This is where you Caracas. Okay. Uh, I can Osage you the Caracas right now while it costs one. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. I guess that turns on Bowmaster that I didn't really need to do. Maybe that was bad. Okay, I'm casting Uro. Uro trigger Brainstorm. It's hoping for a land there. Obviously didn't happen. I have my green locked up at this point. If I Brainstorm now, what happens? I could hit Land Plow. I still have my land drop. I think if they had Bowmaster, it would have happened already. Ancient Tomb, Null Rod. Okay, uh, I don't need a redundant Null Rod. And I'd like to float the Lorien Revealed on top of the deck. Oh, I, I did have the land drop, though. I probably should have just put that into play. Whoops. It doesn't help me cast Arrow. Not interested. Okay, their Caracas is gone. They can reach for Yorion and cast it next turn. They don't have any big loops. Oh, shit. That was a good draw. Now they just get Solitude here and shut me down forever. Orcish Bowmaster. That's way better. <laughs> I was worried about Solitude, but no. I don't even know if this is better. It's just different. Locks me out in a different way. I'm certainly not casting this Lorraine Revealed. So I'm going to cycle this. And I'm going to get a Trop. Try to and leave up white for possible sorts of Plowshares draw here. Here's this guy. City of Traitors. Not helpful. I do have a big creature in play. I'm not dead to this Cauldra. They can't wish for and deploy Yori on all this turn. They are currently hellbent. Maybe they'll just draw a blank. Or they'll just cast Solitude instantly. Okay, Yorian's in their hand. Cauldra's going to attack with nothing else here. That is exactly what happened. Okay, it's time to find that other Terminus. 
Their hand is Yorion. And no other cards. Terminus? Ponder. I'm going to attack with Uro first. Attack with Uro. I go to 9, then back down to 8 from Bowmaster. Put the City of Traders into play. There's the shared fate. A little late on that one. They are going face with Bowmaster, probably going to chump with Army, or chump with... No, Recruiter's too good. Okay. Stoneforge Mystic is the chump. And right about now, I'm wishing I had a Supreme Verdict in my deck. Ponder. Got to shuffle these things that don't get me there. One more look at Terminus. All right. Died with Shared Fates in my hand instead of normal Magic cards in a otherwise pretty close matchup. Um... I could play Shared Fate and maybe... Or no, they get to draw and do everything first. I was about to say maybe I draw a plow, but that's not how any of this works. GG. On to the next one. On the play for round number four, the double Shared hate, shared Fate opener. Um, obviously, the sand has problems. I am going to mulligan it. Not knowing the matchup, I'm not going to count on Swords of Plowshares to get the game won. This hand is much better. What I send to the bottom... This will be either a plow matchup or a force matchup, and I don't know which one it is yet. I believe that Uro can keep me alive longer in plow matchups. If I bottom the plow, I have at least something of a backup plan. Plow matchups are more common. I'm bottoming the force. If I get oops all spelled, I get oops all spelled. Ugh. I like the additional ponder. Okay, I am actually going to see two new cards off the next ponder, and I'm not without a land drop here. It's just not the green source I wanted. We've given up on turn two Sylvan Library. Jeweled Amulet, what the shit. Put a charge counter on Jeweled Amulet. Remove a charge counter from Jeweled Amulet. Add one mana of the noted amulet type. Okay, so this has to be some sort of like Cheerios or Beseech the Mirror Storm nonsense, because Jeweled Amulet's not a real magic card. It's just an artifact that costs zero. Oh, wow, they're actually charging it. Okay. Well... It brainstorm first because the ponder can shuffle it if it needs to, and guess what? It does need to. I don't need a second Sylvan Library, and I don't think this is a source of plowshares matchup after all. Ottawara, ponder, shuffle this. All right, come on, deck. How about that fetch land? Brainstorm. Well, at least we can keep looking. Whatever's going on, Nullrod's going to be really good against it in the sideboard. Grim Monolith. Three mana. Another Grim Monolith. This is four mana. This is a ring, this is a Karn, this is all sorts of scary stuff. Remember when I just chose to put Force of Negation on the bottom? Feeling a little silly right now. Paradoxical outcome, okay. I told you this was some sort of combo deck. Jeweled Amulet, not a card that normally goes in decks. All right, well, I clearly don't have Force. I'm just going to have six and enjoy the ride from here. Here come all the baubles again. Lots of baubles, lots of monoliths, Force of Will under the Chrome Mox. But they're also a Force of Will deck. Good to know. Another PO. I want to see what the wing condition is. What are you actually doing here? I mean, with a couple of Mox Opals, Tendrils is just easy to splash. I'm just pawing through a pile of cards that came in the mail. I bought a bunch of stuff for Goblins. I got Goblin Lackey, Muxus, Shalak Mons, etc. Just passing the time while my opponent diddles themselves. I'm actually kind of interested. Maybe I'm supposed to bring like a pile of random cards to tournaments too, in case my opponent does the diddle themselves business. It was a nice way to pass the time. Okay, they're charging up jeweled amulets and bobbling me. It looks like they are actually going to pass the turn here. They drew half their deck and were rewarded with the one ring. Okay, cool. Glad I didn't concede. Actually getting a turn is the nuts. Activating the ring. Sounds good. Yeah, I have a force, but they know about it. I'm going to brainstorm. Come on, fetch land. Don't do me like this. Okay, we're in there. Not only do I have a fetch land, I have another force, and I can shared fate next turn. Which means that if I put back shared fate ancient tomb, I can sylvan library now Shared Fate Ancient Tomb, and I'm still holding up Force Blue card, Force Blue card. If they counter the Sylvan Library, though, I can't Shared Fate next turn because I have to draw through the, the Ancient Tomb. Okay, it's in there. They balled me on the, in response. They saw the Ancient Tomb. All right. Well, I have, I have two Forces, and I have the lock on top of my deck. 
Let's see where this goes. They're going to have to spend time getting the Force of Negation out of my hand because they know about that one. And then hopefully the Force of Will comes off the top rope to close it out. All these monoliths are starting the turn tapped. Rings up to two. That's a win con. Ancient Tomb. Manifold Key. I mean, that sucks for me, but it's not my, my pressure point. If they just draw a bunch more cards this turn, I don't care. I'm looking for, like, the P.O. The Swords of Plowshares in this deck, too. Look at you. What an adventurous pile this is. A Force of Will, Swords of Plowshares, Tundra deck that also goes nutty with P.O. They didn't pitch to that Chrome box. That makes me think they're about to P.O. Okay, do you have two pieces of interaction here? You've already pitched one Force to a Chrome box. It's in exile. You have drawn half your deck. Okay, Force of Negation. But you knew about that. Bluster Storm. Okay. Annoying one to have in the main deck. Hope you don't have another one. Force of Will, Target, PO, Pitching, Uro. And now I'm F6. Oh, they're tapping mana. My Arch Nemesis, another Fluster Storm. Okay. Well, they did this last turn too and couldn't win. So let's see what happens now. Sad state of affairs that uh, I didn't turn to the Sylvan Library. I guess this is turn three. Would I have been able to get there? Probably not. Okay. They're about to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or they're leaving the ring. All right. Okay. F6 again. That was a fun moment where we thought something might happen, but it won't. That is two less mana than they thought they were going to have. I can't imagine that's going to be the, the calculation. So an interesting thing is I said Jeweled Amulet barely has text on turn one, but they did charge two Jeweled Amulets last turn, and then they had exactly two mana to fluster me twice with on that moment. They had more mana than that, but that was their blue days undoing. Okay, that just went under a Chrome Mox. That's the thing they do. That must mean they have Hall Breacher in this deck. Is that what they're working towards? I can't imagine they would just undo the day after drawing 20 cards and then discard down to seven and pass. Force of Will under the Chrome Mox. The biggest middle finger. Like, yeah, didn't need it. Beat your two forces anyway. Another outcome. It was not lethal. Uh, they do still have five cards in their deck. I was hoping they would punt that, but I'm sure they did the map. Here comes all their baubles again. Just waiting to see a win condition. Like, I just need to know if I'm bringing in Veil of Summer or not. Just tell me. I probably am anyway, because it's so good against Fluster Storm. But they could Thassa's Oracle. That's cool. They are at one card in their deck. Funny enough, if they generate a zillion mana here and cast Emrakul the Aeon's Torn, uh, they still lose. <laughs> uh, they figured it out. Thassa's Oracle's a win con. Okay, so Flusterstorm, Storm, Mindbreak Chat for sure. Null Rod for friggin' sure. Terminus out. Swords to Plowshares out. And Veil of Summer is reasonable counterplay. Do I have two more things I want to cut? I can live without Bronze Bombshell, believe it or not. And... I could shave a monolith because I'm bringing in my null rods. Sure, that looks reasonable to me. Oh, Chalice on zero also jacks this matchup right up. Okay, Grim Monolith is out again. And oh no, I like the rest of my cards. I don't need Basic Island. They're not going to attack my mana sources. So Basic Island is part of the Lorien Revealed package. Maybe it's City of Traitors, actually, that I can live without. Okay, I'm going to do it like that. I'll leave the island in. City of Traders does cast Null Rod on one. All right, keeping this hand. This is great. Force and Fluster. Blooded Strand, go. Tundra, Amulet. A modest turn one. I'd love to slam Null Rod here. That would be so sick. With backup. Okay, I guess I'm gonna play Sylvan Library here and invest in the future. This taps me out of Fluster for the turn. Like, I could have waited a turn. Played Sylvan Library with Fluster and Force. Their turn one was not impressive, though. I hope that uh, I'm able to just bottleneck them somewhere here and get the library cranking. Opal, that's not on yet. At all. Opal's on now. Could be in trouble. If they have Pio and Fluster Storm here, I'm a little behind. Lorian Revealed. I don't think I fight over this. Do I? Maybe I do. Yeah, actually, I am. I'm going to pitch Brainstorm, because if they fluster this, yeah, they're just out of gas here, and I have Library, and they don't, and I get to untap into Fluster. Yeah, I think I'd rather bottleneck their ability to fight back meaningfully. Force of Will and Uro. 
pay for a life to keep, and pay for a life to keep. The life total is not what this matchup's about. I'm going to go even lower with the Ancient Tomb to make sure I'm holding a Fluster Storm on their turn. Trigger. Cool. Fluster, Force Backup. Burrows Looming. Gained back a bunch of the life I just lost. Urza Saga. That's cheating. We had an agreement that you would die to my Fluster Storms. They're looking for a Basaju at this point. Ponder. Null Rod. That's almost good. I mean, I'm keeping it and playing it. Uh, I don't think I need the third Uro. I will start respecting my life total a little bit with this stupid Urza Saga here. And I will pay for life to keep the Ponder. I'm going to fetch for a white. Play my Ponder. Chalice of the Void on zero. Does Chalice on zero matter if I already have Null Rod in play? That's in playing out the zeros is a different part of the deck that also matters. Okay. I'm going to keep the Chalice. Going to play Chalice on zero. And then I'm going to Null Rod. And I'm going to tap out of the Fluster to do this. I don't think they can actually present something I need to Fluster Storm through Null Rod plus Chalice. I guess if they hardcast Force right now, but I just force it. Hardcast Force. Is this a spot where I choose a fight? Yeah, I think so. Force Pitching, Fluster. I want to keep the Uros because I'm worried about my, my life total at this point. The Constructs are going to be trouble. Yeah, the Chalice on Zero also keeps the Constructs smaller. Manifold Key, that one does get through. And it would be great to library into a green source here and get the actual 6-6 six, six Uro into play. No action on that. Top the library, top the force. Ponder. There's the green source. It was one card too deep. That hurts a lot, actually. Okay, get this. Play the Trop. Play the Uro. Go to nine. And I have Force Blue card in my hand. If they tutor a Soul Guide Lantern, they get to exile one of the Uros, but can't kill the other one. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Oh, no, it's too big. This was the turn I needed to do something. I love just dying to Urza Saga when you have every other line covered. This is my favorite play pattern <laughs> that Urza Saga has brought into Legacy. I'm being sarcastic right now, but I actually do think it's unironically cool that this Blast Cannon PO Storm deck is about to just kill me through Chalice on Zero and Null Rod and like easily. You got a Voltaic Key. That's countered. Remember my Chalice? It's not going to matter, but... All right, what do I need to do here? I need to find Paseju and another Greenland off of Sylvan Library. And I need to play Uro, putting the Greenland into play and drawing the Paseju, which I've seen the top of my deck. I know it doesn't contain all those cards. Okay, top, top. Uh, the Fetchland is in out here. I fetch for a green source. Uh, it might as well be Savannah, I guess. I don't have any Force of Vigors. Yeah, my plows are out. It is Boseju or Bust here. And blue, blue, green, green. One, two, three, four, five. Draw Boseju or lose the game. Draw Boseju right now. Tundra, okay. And we're dead. GG. Okay, uh... Went a little too hard, just didn't see Urza Saga game one. They did a good job of hiding that for me. I could probably deduce it was there, but like, what do I do differently? Just leave in a plow? I don't even know if I buy that. Okay, they got me. On to the next one. I'm on the draw in the final round. I have Uro, Force of Will, and the ability to do those things. I'll keep... We've already won a match, so we're not fending off the 05. Nothing on the line here. I guess I'm playing for the two wins... Uh, your money back. Moto leagues are insanely generous. Just an other, an otherwise uh, irrelevant thought. But if you you only lose all your money if you go one four or zero five. If you win even two matches, you get half your entry back. And at three one or three two, you're making profit. These things are great. Bonin has a ponder. Did not shuffle it. Shared fate. Now I got a game plan. An Urza Saga out of this Underground Sea strategy. Don't like that. Grim Monolith, neat. Ancient Tomb Grim Monolith, send it. We're jamming the Shared Fate. 
I don't even know if that's good. Like Urza Saga specifically, a shout it out to Fairy Time Reveler as a card that this deck can never beat, but Urza Saga is uh, giving me problems. However, if they try to engage with me on a Cephalid Breakfast type of axis and don't make constructs, this might work out well for me. There's the Shuko. Okay. I'm going to force the, the pal. I think I pitch Uro to do this, actually, in case I need to brainstorm, emergency brainstorm for more interaction. I'd rather have Uro in my hand, but I don't think they shove here without protection. And I was correct. I'll grab a Tundra here and try to brainstorm into... Oh, wait, I can just auto war this thing. I already have an out. Oh, that's tricky. I could take the guaranteed Ottawara, bounce the Illusionist, and then they have nothing. But they can just refire the combo next turn. I wonder if there's a strategic point where I bounce the Illusionist after they've committed some amount of their deck to the graveyard. Does that even matter? Interesting. If I do that, I get to untap with Brainstorm and Swords of Plowshares is live. Or I would bounce Shuko, not Illusionist. Um, yeah, I actually... I've talked myself into this. This doubles my outs from just Force of Will on in three cards to Force of Will or Swords of Plowshares in four cards. And I like those numbers better. Basically, what I need to do here is bounce the Shuko at the point where they've committed a bunch of cards to the graveyard, but can't go off yet. Okay, there's Narcomoeba. Another Narcomoeba. There's no Cabal Therapy yet. Just milling some stuff. Pact of Negation is in this deck. Good to know. Oh, I wish they used that on my force. I would have beat them with the Ottawa. There's a third Narcomoeba. Okay, this is getting interesting because that's all the creatures they're going to get. They can't name Ottawara off of Cabal Therapy. So if they mill their whole deck here, sack one of these creatures to Cabal Therapy, I can Ottawara another one. If Yeah, if Cabal Therapy is in their bottom three cards, I might just beat them here. There's Dread Return. Shit, it's too late. Uh, I need them to Cabal Therapy me now. Okay, there's the Therapy. I need them to fall for this. If they Therapy, they lose. If they don't Therapy, they win. Yes, yes, yes. Ottawara bounce the Illusionist, which mills another three cards. And then they just deck themselves and die? Wowee! Okay, okay. Zero cards in your deck. Can't Dread Return. What do you want to do? We got a nice in the chat. Yeah, I thought so too. That worked out way better than I thought. Unfortunately, I have to reveal my secret shared, take, shared fate tech to this Cabal Therapy. They named Brimsbarone Midway Mobster. Great choice. Deep cut. All right, well, got away with that one. Found the line. Glad I didn't brainstorm. Leyline of the Void comes in. I was so excited I forgot to check what else their deck does. I didn't even look for Stoneforge Mystics or anything. I was just in hype mode. But I saw Active Negations and Lotus Petals, so they're probably the fast build, which means I want Mind Break Traps, I want Fluster Storms, Veil of Summer can help me win Counter Wars and flank off Cabal Therapies. I don't think I want Null Rod, but I am going to go in on some of this other stuff. The big sideboard turn, big sideboard game. The Grim Monolith, although it was a hero of that game, is going to come out. City of Traders can come out. They're not going to mess with my mana. I think I can lose Basic Island for the same reason. I, I'm still a 21 land deck with four Lorian Revealed. It's fine. I'm going to shave the Terminuses. I still want Plow because it's good against the combo and good against the, the Constructs. I think I got to shave a Shared Fate. I don't like cutting a blue card, but this card's bad. And it's a combo matchup. And I need this to win the game because my deck doesn't know how to win games. I, think I can shave a Sylvan Library. I don't like doing it. And Force of Negation hits Teferi and it can help on Counter Wars. But doesn't hit the actual creatures. Do I shave an Uro? I don't have Endurances to pitch green cards to, so I don't have to think about that. I just have to think about Uro as a blue card and uh, a draw engine. Okay, uh, the sideboard is not mapped out particularly well for Cephalid Breakfast, uh, but I think we found something resembling a plan. Dang. Leyline of the Void and a force to protect it. Hey, we don't just win with Leyline, but it does slow down their fastest bullshit. 
Tundra and Ponder. Ponder chose to shuffle. I have Force Blue card, Force Blue card now, and Veil of Summer. I think the way we reasonably lose this game at this point is if they just Saga and Construct out on me. There it is. I do have all my Plows in. I have two Besejus in here. I'm not going to fight over Shuko. I don't care about that card as long as I have a Ley Line. And Ponder. I'm deeply regretting not looking closer at their deck. I don't remember if they have Bowmasters or not. I don't know anything. I think I'm going to pass here. I can fight over a Bowmaster in the end step. If I end step Brainstorm. And if they Bowmaster, it means they're not activating Saga with that mana. I'm fine with it. End step Brainstorm. Send it. Ancient Tomb Sylvan Library. I like these cards, all of them. Put back Uro and Ancient Tomb. Or no, I, I don't need three forces. I'm going to put away Force of Negation, and I'm going to redraw the Ancient Tomb. Play the Tomb, fetch for a green source, and get this Sylvan Library in the mix. This taps me out of Veil of Summer for the turn, but I don't think that's what I need to be worried about right now. I need to be worried about getting bashed with four and five power creatures. There's a Construct. Let's see if they have any check, like Retrofit or Foundry or Soul Guide Lantern or anything, or if this is just another Shuko. We know there's Lotus Petals in their deck. Yeah, Shuko just makes this a six power attacker. Okay, Sylvan Library, dig me out of this Uro. Gain me life. Take the wheel, green cards. And they're moving their Shukos over to the blocking creature. Might as well. Not hurting anything being over there. Okay, so I want to find White Source and Swords of Plowshares in this Sylvan Library activation. Ottawara, that does clear something. Hey, everything I asked for is here. That means I can put both of these on top. Top and top. And then I play Savannah, play Uro, lose two life for the pleasure. Uro trigger finds the plow. And if I plow now, I take extra damage, but I don't end up in a counter where I can't win. Like if I plow on their turn, I can take the Shukos down with them. I think I'm just going to plow now. I'm currently have a mana floating so I can play around days. And I don't want them to be able to fluster storm or any such thing. Okay, the Ottawa can clear this construct token next turn. Approaching something that resembles stability right now. I'm at nine. The Ancient Tomb Sylvan Library aspect of this deck is certainly something. Well, therapy shit. <laughs> Are they going to three for one? Yeah, they are. Put them in the goddamn graveyard. Got me with the three ball. Fortunately, that's not what this game is actually about, but I do, I do miss those. That also gassed up my graveyard for Uro. Shared Fate, two Ottawaras. Okay. Shared Fate on top. Ottawara. I could pay for life to keep this Ottawara. No. Ottawara on top. Okay. And I am just going to pass the turn here. I can bounce their construct and hold up Veil of Summer for a cycle. I go to seven on that exchange, but then Uro's online next turn. Oh no, don't do stuff. Stop. Stepping through, sure. You can go off into Sylvan Library. Does work. If the Oracle's in your hand already. Or into uh, Leyline of the Void. Obviously you could go off into Sylvan Library. Yeah, Leyline of the Void. If your deck gets empty, Thassa's Oracle doesn't care if they're in the graveyard or the exile, if it just jumps in from your hand. They are now representing the full combo. Oh, the backup saga. Okay, I gotta bounce this thing. Ottawa once again, saving my bacon. Oh, fascinating. If they combo off into Shared Fate, they exile their whole deck, and I don't get to draw any cards for the rest of the game. <laughs> this is awesome. Sylvan Library, find me beside you. Leyline of the Void, definitely not. On top, and I think I put Shared Fate on top here. If I slam Shared Fate, they actually can't just untap, go off, and I draw no more cards forever. Okay, top, top. Play the Ottawara. Play the Uro. They could have all manner of removal for this in their five-card hand. Here it comes. Okay, it's in there. Drawing Shared Fate. Uh, let's see if the Thassa's Oracle's in their hand, I guess. Or if they can Brazen Bar or my Leyline of the Void in the end step, that would do it too. There's a lot of things I died to here. 
But I don't think I win this game by not playing Uro. The saga is just too much pressure. Disappointed. Me with Veil of Summer. That Cabal Therapy, though. I guess if I force the Cabal Therapy, then I still have one Force in my hand, and I would have Force plus Shared Fate here. All right, they Orms chanted me also. Okay, I am going to take the time to actually look at the cards in their deck, and especially their sideboard plan here. We got Dazes, Orms Chants, Lotus Petal. There's the Oracle. There's an Archimeba. Another Archimeba. Two Brazen Borrowers in here. Back to Negation still in. Archimeba. Okay. Back to Negation. Lotus Petal. Etc. They're still targeting their Illusionist Washuko, even though their deck's empty. You can stop. <laughs> All right. There we go. I'm dead. Alrighty. Uh, I think on the play, I want Sylvan Library back. And I just want the flow of cards to keep coming. I think I can shave a Lorien Revealed here. I don't think Mind Break Trap is that bad, uh, especially since I can get into hard casting it pretty reasonably with this deck. And it's blue cards for my six existing forces. Okay, here we go. One more game to determine if I get half my money back on this league. My opening hand does not interact in any way. I'm going to mulligan it. It's extra important that if you're going to put Leyline in, you got to be willing to mull it because I can't cast it. And Malta 6 found one. I'm going to keep this and bottom the Ancient Tomb. Opponents on 6 as well. I appreciate them keeping it even. I have a Besage you this game, so I have some respect ready for Urza Saga. Ponder, I'll take the land now and hide the Brainstorms. They have shown me discard, and that they're a bit of a sniper with Cabal Therapy. There's a Saga, just firing out there on turn one. I'm going to play my Tundra and pass. I don't want to fix them into Colored Mana, because this deck doesn't play Ancient Tomb. This is just a Saga built to tutor. And if it's a Saga that's just built to tutor, I could hit the Shuko at the back end of it. Ponder, yep. I'm going to play Savannah and pass. I have Force Blue card plus Beseju plus Brainstorm, Emergency Brainstorm if I need to. Emergency Brainstorm can hit Mind Break Trap. That may or may not be useful. But I do have a single card that can affect a crazy back and forth turn. Okay, they win in on the Shuko. I can kill that whenever it's convenient. Narc Amoeba. All right. The beatdowns have begun. I don't think I ramp them here over a little Narc Amoeba. A brainstorm. Show me some cards. Leyline of the Void can get out of here and as I float out of war on top. No shuffle here is kind of the stains. But I can cast this Force of Negation and I can still besiege you. I am on a powerful 10 turn clock though. They're fetching. Cabal Therapy. Resolves. It goes to the exile anyway. Just, just. Game Force of Will or whatever and get rid of it. That's fine. I have the Force of Negation. They see the Besaju now, which is something that they might need to play around. I draw Ottawara here. I could Brainstorm, but that doesn't see... Yeah, with the amount of pressure I'm under, I think I just pass without making any play here. Getting Brainstorm locked is worth 6 damage when I can take 2 to try to avoid that happening. Ponder from the enemy. It did not shuffle. The Narcomy of a beatdown plan is actually pretty great here. Another Ponder. That one did shuffle. And they played another land that's not Urza Saga. I appreciate it. Okay, Brainstorm. Can I have a shuffle and some good cards? Yes to both. Put back Leyline. And do I need Mind Break Trap in this hand? Do I need Ottawa in this hand? I'm actually going to put back the Ottawara and then cycle Lorien Revealed and grab a Tropical Island. I have a lot of white available. I need, I can only search for blue lands. And okay, pass. Dark Amoeba Beatdown continues. I am not going to plow this in the end step. I'm going to wait till I'm untapped because they know I have Force of Negation, which means if I tap out of Force of Negation, then they can. Brazen Borrow my Ley Line, which is not something I want to occur. Fetching in my end step. 
if they auto war on my ley line. Nothing I can do about that. They are stepping through, making the move here. Okay, now the plow is extra spooky. Uh, plowing the Narcomoeba is even worse than it was a second ago. Any theft. Okay, they know I have Force of Negation. Blue, blue. There's still a Tundra in the deck. Uh, I'm going to fetch first, just to make sure I don't mess this up, because my colors matter a lot here. Yes, okay, Tundra's still in the deck. Force of Negation. Blue, blue. Colorless. I could still Besaju and Plow here. A forced pitching force. Okay. Leyline will be back in my hand. And then I can Besaju Shuko and or Plow Illusionist. They're going to get their beats in first. Okay, crack and a fetch. If they Teferi me here, that's a beating. Illusionist is in. Now I have to decide if there's a uh, smart place to break this up or if I just go after it. Narc Amoeba, the Oracle's in there. Okay. Um, that's allowed to happen. They milled some more stuff that doesn't matter. They milled some more stuff that doesn't matter. Okay, how do I die here? Um, if they hit the Dread Return, I lose. I think this is a reasonable enough spot. I don't know. That was kind of arbitrary. Because they have the, the Brazen Borrower in Exile and enough mana. But hold up, hold up, hold up. They've cast, what, this turn? They've cast Cephalid Illusionist this turn. And that's it. I can get them to three spells. And because this is Shuko, I get to see if they milled the Dread Return. And they've now milled the Dread Return, but they have to get their deck empty. Okay, I'm going to make them commit. All right. Uh, I'm going to plow the Illusionist now, actually. Hold on. Is an Archimiba accounted for? If they hit the third Narco, my plan doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to plow the Illusionist now and hope we went deep enough. I think I was supposed to save that plow for Brazen Borrower. I got in my own sauce. I'm supposed to besage you, not plow. Pact of Negation, that's pretty good. I will besage you the Shuko now. Or, shit, I was supposed to... They were helping. I was supposed to let them... That was their second spell. Yeah, I was... Damn it. <laughs> Got lost in the sauce on that one. Uh, I, I have them just beat with Mind Break Trap here, unless they play a second Cabal Therapy, which I'm not sure they do. Ugh, my brain is just gush. Cluster Storm, Mind Break Trap. So I'm going to have to Mind Break Trap the Brazen Borrower just to keep the pressure off. I can't believe I just did that. Okay. This league has been very weird anti-magic, and it's game three of match three. Brain officially mush. Feeling bad about it, but it's okay. If I find an Uro, I am fine. If I can just gain life over the top of this other junk that's happening, I am fine. They have exactly enough to pay for the pact. All right, deck, come on. Give me a, a Lorian reveal. Give me a Swords to Plowshares. Give me something here. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. I'll take that one. From the top rope. My boy. My dear sweet angel. If I fetch right now and slam the Uro, they would have... Or let's do a count, graveyard count. One, two, three Nomads, one Shuko. Uh, there was some stuff in Exile. Is Flusterstorm ever going to break up a Dread Return on this board? So they... Nomad, that's one. They Dread Return, that's two. Yeah, I... Uh, I just don't beat what I have with Flusterstorm anyway, so it's better to take the draw with Uro, see if I can find a Force. Or, uh, I think Force is what I'm looking for. I was about to say, or something else, but I don't even know what the other, or something else is. Okay, if I lose this, I deserve it, but, uh, we have found a window here. Fingers crossed, don't kill me, go. They've had two random draws here with which to do stuff. So that little illusionist can target itself with its activated ability to mill three. Ah, I deserve it, but I'm not happy about it. All right. Yep. That was my own fault. I I missequenced my play on that Swords of Plowshares. I was supposed to besage you, and maybe I just... After the plow, then they packed it, and I didn't adjust my information to the fact that they're just ice cold and mind break trap. All right. Thousand percent my fault. Okay. Uh, this deck is obviously insane. We did not 0-5, and we were a punt away from 
2-3 even, winning any matches at all in the competitive Magic Online leagues with a deck like this makes me happy. We did the shared fate thing a number of times. If I were to change this deck, I mean, the bronze bombshell, I'm glad I got to play this card on the channel. I can't imagine it'll ever happen again, but it was in the deck. I would make that a supreme verdict. We spent a lot of these games just wishing we could remove three or four power from play, and the two terminus are not enough to get that done. Supreme Verdict fits the bill of cards that don't help them once we're in Shared Fate. Like, you could Verdict my Uro, it'll be back. That's fine. The Grim Monoliths also didn't really hold up. I've kind of backed off of that. I think I want to back off it the rest of the way. I don't mind the Ancient Tombs, actually. Uh, they, they were kind of cool. If the Monoliths and Bombshell become, like, two Supreme Verdicts and... There's probably some other reasonable removal spell you could play. You can't play Prismatic Ending or Leyline Binding or anything like that because those can remove Shared Fate once your opponent has infinite time to figure it out. Yeah, just more Sweepers or Removal, put those in, and that's my recommendation. This deck was crazy, melted my brain the whole time. It was fun, but I am not going to do this again. CC Ant-Man, thank you for sharing your madness with the world. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.